Welcome to Hartman Math. This is lesson 10.7, polar coordinates. So instead of having an X and a Y coordinate, we are going to have an R and a theta coordinate, where R is a directed distance from the origin to our point. So it might be positive, might be negative. And theta is a directed angle. Think in terms of our trig angles, they can be positive, rotating uh, counterclockwise, or negative, rotating clockwise. So if we have our origin here, the coordinates here would be r, comma, theta. So directed distance, comma, directed angle. Example number one, plot each point in, uh, given in polar coordinates. So here's our r, here's our theta, okay? So notice that the uh, coordinate plane looks a little different. Uh, good idea to show essentially x and y axis here, uh, except we're talking about uh, our t angles in, our quadrant angles in the unit circle. And then notice that we have these concentric circles uh, where these are equal distances, one, two, three uh, units away from the origin. So essentially what we're saying is we want to go three units away in terms of the angle of negative pi over three. So negative pi over three is going to mean we're going to rotate uh, down into quadrant four. It's uh, clockwise and three units away from the origin. So that puts us out here rotating down to where uh, pi over three would be negative uh, direction. So we kind of see the angle, negative pi over 3, and then we would put the point three units away. And there's our point. All right, part, uh, part B, negative 2 as a directed distance, uh, comma, pi as the angle. So we'll go to pi first, there's pi, and then it says go negative 2, which means don't go to that way. Negative means go the opposite way. So instead of going to this way, we'll go the exact opposite direction, one, two, and it goes right there. And that's where we would plot that point. Example number two, plot the point, and then find three additional representations in this polar coordinate form that would give you the same location, same destination as long as this is the uh, range of our theta, our directed angle. All right, so let's start with 11 pi over 6 rotates this way. So pi over 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way around 11 pi over 6 here in the fourth quadrant. And then negative 2 meaning well, don't go to that way. Go to the other way, shooting straight across, and we should wind up at our point. Okay, so now, think about it for a moment. See if you can come up with as many as you can. Three is our goal here of other ways of writing this and ending up here with this restriction. Pause here, think about it, come back when you got it. All right, so let's look at some of our options here. Uh, let's say if we just kind of went direct and went this way, two units going this angle right here, five pi over six, that would work. We could also go two units, same angle, but rotate this way. So two units going this way, that would be negative 7 pi over 6. And then I think for our last one, I think we're going to have to go this negative 2 again. So think of this, but not as 11 pi over 6. What about going the other way? Maybe that would be negative pi over 6, and then shoot across. So negative pi over 6 is our theta, negative 2 going opposite, and those are our three other ways under that condition. To represent that point. 
if we would like to convert from polar to rectangular and vice versa, here's how we're going to do it. If we're going to go polar to rectangular, we know r and theta. The x coordinate is r times cosine theta. The y coordinate is r times sine theta. Going the other direction, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Can think in terms of Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so therefore, if we wanted to find r, we would just square root this. Uh, and then tangent of theta is the y over the x. That's going to find theta. Once again, we really got to be thinking, as we've done in terms of vectors and other places, um, if you're doing inverse tangent, especially on a calculator, you're going to have to be thinking, what quadrant uh, should I be in uh, to get us the, the correct theta? Example number three, convert into rectangular. That's probably the easiest as it's pretty direct here. Uh, so we're going to say the x coordinate is r times cosine theta. And since the cosine of 3 pi over 4 being in quadrant 2, that's going to be negative root 2 over 2 times root 2. You get an x coordinate of negative 1. Now let's do y. y is equal to r sine 3 pi over 4. Quadrant 2, sine is positive, so root 2 times root 2 over 2, and we get 1. So our coordinates, negative 1, comma 1. Final answer. Example number 4, let's go the other direction. We've got rectangular coordinates. Let's turn them into polar coordinates. So the easiest one to go after is r. So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. If we're going after the theta, tangent theta is the y over the x, so 1 over negative root 3, or negative 1 over root 3. Then we think, ah, that should, we should be familiar with that one, we should know that one. So where uh, is the tangent of theta? That. But we're also going left and up in terms of coordinates, so we want to be thinking quadrant 2. I think that's going to be 5 pi over 6. And then r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and we would get 2. So the most logical thing that we would have would be 2 comma 5 pi over 6. As we saw earlier, it's definitely not the only way. If we had it as, okay, think quadrant 4, uh, 11 pi over 6, that's fine, as long as we still shoot the other way into quadrant 2. Uh, so we could have got 11 pi over 6 here, negative 2 there. That seems like a lot of extra work and thinking. Probably best just to go direct into, we want to be directly in quadrant 2. All right, example number 5, now to just coordinates, we're going to write some equations. And this is a polar equation. And we want to change it to rectangular form. And then we'll talk about basically what is it the equation of. So we've got r is equal to uh, 7. And here's what we know. If we go back a little bit to our equations. We know that r squared is x squared plus y squared. So maybe if we squared both sides of that equation, we could get into this. So square both sides. And then to get into rectangular, which means x's and or y's, r squared can be replaced by x squared plus y squared. So what would that be? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the equation of a circle. Radius equals 7 of a circle. That would be the graph. All right, part b, what about theta equals 5 pi over 6, that's kind of an angle. I don't know about theta, but I do know back in our conversions there was something about tangent theta. So how about we take the tangent on both sides? If we take the tangent of 5 pi over 6, we get negative 1 uh, over root 3, or negative root 3 over 3, depending on your preference. 
then what is the tangent of theta in terms of rectangular? That's y over x. So we can now replace that by y over x. And then if we want this to be a little bit more And then if we want this to be a little bit more normal form, uh, we might want to put this in y equals mx plus b form. So if we multiply everything by x, but this would be okay as well, but this is a little bit more, uh, more standard here. So what is that? Again, so we're talking about y equals mx plus b. That's a line. So we've got a line there. All right, part C, R equals cosecant theta. Hmm. So I know one of the conversions, and we could go, this is the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared. That doesn't really help us here. So, but I do know in one of the conversions is there's an R sine theta and there's an R cosine theta. So we have both of those. So I'm thinking of those, which is more uh, relatable to cosecant theta. Well, since this is the reciprocal of sine, what if we turn this into r sine theta, which is something we have a conversion for. So if I multiply both sides by sine theta, we would get r sine theta equals 1 because if on the right side we multiply by sine theta. If you multiply by reciprocals, you get 1. And then what is r sine theta? That's just y. So there's our equation. y equals 1, horizontal line. All right, example 5.5, kind of going the other way. We've got a rectangular. Let's see if we can change that into a polar equation. So we're going to, our destination is r's and or thetas. So we can start with direct substitution. You know, y is r sine theta, x is r cosine theta. And we will need to square that. Right, so now, we, most of the time, a lot of these are in terms of r equals. That's a common uh, polar equation. So we're kind of looking for one single r. So we could divide both sides by an r. And then if we want to get the r by itself, we can divide both sides by cosine squared theta. And that would be acceptable. But if we wanted to maybe write this in terms of maybe not being a fraction, we could think of this as a couple ways. We could think of this as sine divided by cosine squared theta and therefore dividing by cosine squared theta is the same as multiplying by secant squared theta, use the reciprocal identity there, then there's no quotient. But if we want to kind of get as, as few functions as possible, think of this as sine theta over cosine theta times one over another cosine theta, split it up that way. Sine over cosine is tangent, one over cosine is secant, and there we are, r equals secant theta times tangent theta. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.